Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and today we're going to be upgrading our Steam Deck OLED. So let's get right into it. Now, I absolutely am still in love with my Steam Deck OLED. I made a couple of videos on it already on this channel, and I'm going to be making a lot more to come in the future. Now, there is one issue I still have with the Steam Deck, and it's actually the same issue I had with my original one as well, is the storage. So this one is the 512 gigabyte model SSD. And it does have expandable storage with a micro SD card, which is great. I use the same thing with my original LCD model as well, but there is one major issue to playing games off of the micro SD card. There is no micro SD card on the market that runs as fast and efficiently as an internal M.2 drive SSD. If you don't know what that means, essentially a micro SD card, which is the external that you plug in down here, is just not as fast or reliable as the internal SSD is that's built into your Steam Deck. There's one way around this, of course, which is just to pay extra money and get the one terabyte model that is now available with the Steam Deck OLED, which is great. However, I talked about this in my unboxing video that the reason I went with the 512 gigabyte model is honestly because of the display. I just prefer the look of the glossy display over the non-reflective etched display that comes with the one terabyte model. I wish that they gave the option to choose between the two when you go with the one terabyte model, but they don't give you that option. So I went with the less storage internally, and I've been just using a micro SD card. Coming back to what I was saying about the micro SD card not being as efficient or running as well, is that for certain games like Forza, or really any game that is a higher fidelity, uses more graphical intensity, like it's a AAA title for instance, you're going to have a lot more frame issues, we'll put it at that, with the micro SD card, as opposed to running it on the regular SSD that's internally installed. So, how do you fix that without having to go out and buy a whole new Steam Deck? You get one of these guys. So this is a Rocket Q4 SSD M.2, and this is a 2 terabyte SSD. So, we're going to be going from a 512 gigabyte SSD that's currently in the OLED to an upgrade of 2 terabytes. This will be a pretty big upgrade. I'm very excited for this, and it should be relatively simple. And if everything goes to plan the way it's supposed to, uh, this video will be a tutorial for you guys and i'll have all the links in the description below for everything that you will need to get this completed and i'll also have the tools and this ssd in the description as well if you want to get the exact same one that i did so with that let's switch over to voiceover nick already voiceover nick has now taken over the show hello everybody I'm just going to go over the first few things you're going to need for this upgrade the first thing is which i highly recommend is an ifixit toolkit you don't need the most expensive one out there. This is actually the cheapest one they sell for like 50 bucks on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description to it. I'm not affiliated with them or sponsored, but it is a great tool set and highly recommended if you're ever taking apart anything like this in the future. Next, of course, you're going to need your SSD ready to go. Make sure it is the correct size for your Steam Deck. You will then need a USB drive. I'm using a USB-C flash drive so that I don't have to worry about getting a converter from USB-A to USB-C in order to plug it into my Steam Deck. I also recommend getting a pair of tweezers. These can be just regular household tweezers, or if you have a upgraded kit from the iFixit guys, it does come with a pair of electronic tweezers. And last but not least, you're gonna need something with a very fine edge. I'm just using a compass I found in my desk drawer, but just something that you can use to pry open the sides of the Steam Deck once you get the screws out. That essentially will be all you will need to start the process. The first thing we're going to do is actually head over to our computer. We're going to plug in that USB flash drive like I showed earlier. And once that is plugged in, you're going to go to the first link I will have in the description below, which will bring you to the website that has the Steam OS download link. Just make sure you click that you agree for the end user license agreement and click download Steam OS deck image. While that one is downloading, which it could take a minute or so, we can head over to the second link in the description, which is for Rufus. It's basically just a free program that will create a bootable USB drive for the new operating system to work on your Steam Deck. Once you're on the website, you're just going to scroll down and click on the Rufus 4.3 EXE if you're running on Windows. You can save it wherever you want on the computer and just click save. Next, you're going to unzip the Steam OS operating system file and you're going to open up the Rufus program. Once it is opened, as long as you have your flash drive plugged into the computer, it should automatically register it under the device tab. If you do not see it, click on that and try to find it in your computer to make sure that it is selected. Next, below that, we're going to click the select button in the boot selection area, and we're going to find the file for the Steam OS. Once that is selected, make sure it's saying Steam Deck Repair inside of the boot selection tab. 
and under partition scheme, sometimes this will automatically select for you. Mine automatically selected MBR, but it really doesn't matter from which one it selects. And just make sure that your target system says BIOS. The file system is large FAT32, which is the default, and your cluster size is 32 kilobytes. Everything else should be left alone and we can just hit start. This will now write the image to your USB drive. And once that is complete, you may unplug your USB drive from your PC. Now we are ready to rock and roll. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your Steam Deck is fully powered down by going down to the power settings and going to shut down device. All right. Now, once it's fully powered off, what you're going to do is hold down the volume up button and the power button at the same time. This can take up to 15 seconds to fully boot up, but you will see the LED flash letting you know you can let go of the buttons. This will bring you right into the boot manager and we're going to go down to set up utility. And we're going to go over to click on the power options. And from here, you're going to click on the enter, which is right next to battery storage mode to essentially put the Steam Deck in battery storage mode. Your device should power off. And what this will do is it will not allow the user to turn the device back on until it is plugged into a power source. So for this next part, it's pretty simple. We're just going to whip out the iFixit kit and we're going to get the correct head here for the screws. From my kit here, I found that the Torx T5 is the perfect size for the Steam Deck OLED. I know the LCD version does have different screws, but this tutorial should work for both models. Just make sure that you're using the correct screwdriver bit in order to not strip your screws. Once you've unscrewed all eight of the backplate screws, make sure to unplug any micro SD cards that you may have in the device, because if you try prying off the back, it can break it in half. So that is a very important step. Do not forget that. And for this next part, this one, you're going to need that fine edge card, AKA that compass that I found in my desk drawer. This is kind of a tricky maneuver. At first, I was really worried about breaking the plastic or snapping some of the catches inside of the device, but thankfully they do pop apart with ease with a little bit of prying. Just make sure you start at the bottom. It seems a lot easier from down there, at least in my opinion, and then slowly make your way around the device with using that tool and eventually it'll all pop off. You can remove the entire backplate all in one go. And once you have the backplate off, the first thing we're going to do is unplug the battery ribbon cable on the left side here using those tweezers. It's pretty simple. Just lift up the little tab that's holding it in place and then just pull it backwards until it pops out of place. Once that is removed, there's only two more screws to remove to get the plate off of the heatsink and to get to the SSD. This is actually really simple with the OLED version. I know the LCD is a little bit different, so you might have to look up a different tutorial for the LCD model. I do apologize, but it should relatively be the same process of just removing a couple screws in order to get to the SSD compartment. One thing I did notice is make sure to watch the bottom right corner of this plate. It's a little tiny rod that sticks out to go around the screw hole and it is very fragile. So you can bend that pretty easily. So just make sure you're being very careful when removing this plate. The battery ribbon is glued to the back of it to keep it in place. Do not remove the glue and do not remove the ribbon from the back. Just flip it backwards to get it out of your way. And then you can see here we have the SSD. We're just going to unscrew this one last screw here and you should be able to remove it just by pulling it out very slowly. There we go. Next, you're going to remove the heat shield just by sliding it off. If it doesn't come off easily, you can remove it by pulling it apart, but you want to make sure that you reattach it to the new SSD before installing. So we're going to get the new SSD out of the packaging here. It's going to come in a little plate, which is pretty cool. We're going to remove it from there. And as you can see, this one does not come with its own heat shield. So we're going to replace it with the one that was on the previous SSD that came with the Steam Deck. Thankfully, this one on pretty easily. Just slipped it right into place. I didn't have to re-glue anything. And just make sure you have it on the right way with the two prongs that kind of look like plugins, looking more towards the prongs of the SSD. Once it's plugged in, we're just going to hold it down and we're going to use that screw and screw it back into place so it's nice and snug. Do not over tighten it because you could strip it or damage the SSD. And once it's installed, we should be good to go to put everything back together. So essentially, we're just going to work backwards by re-putting the plate back in place here and we're going to re-screw in back those two screws. I did get kind of confused here at first. I thought that my unit was actually missing some screws from the factory because there wasn't one in the bottom right or in the upper right, which I thought was kind of weird. But then I realized that those are the screws that you actually end up putting into the back plate once that's reattached. So thankfully, you don't have to worry about that when you have the back plate removed. And after we have the cover put back in place, the two screws, we can now reattach the ribbon cable and we can get the back plate back installed. 
Putting the back plate back on was pretty simple. Just put it in place and then go around every corner and just make sure it snaps shut. You don't have any seams showing the internals or anything of the sort so that you can put the screws back in successfully. And the final step here is just to screw in all these screws that were removed from the back shell. Alrighty, now that we got that all put back together, the next step is the most important, which is installing the Steam operating system. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that USB flash drive that we put the operating system on earlier. We're going to plug it into the top of the device. Again, if you're not using a USB-C drive, you're going to have to find an adapter that goes from a USB-A to USB-C. Plug into the top. We're going to hold the volume up and the power down again. This took a little bit longer than before, so give it some patience. But this time we're going to go to the boot manager instead of the setup utility like before. And we're going to click under boot options, the name of your flash drive. This again could take up to five minutes. So just give it time to install the operating system. Once it's installed, you should see the Steam boot image just like before. I thought this was kind of funny that it's actually the old LCD version, not the new OLED version, but that doesn't matter. We will be brought to the Steam desktop mode here and we're gonna click on the re-image Steam Deck. Do not click on reinstall Steam OS. Just trust me on this, you want re-image Steam Deck. Once it opens up, we're gonna click on proceed and let it install. And it will ask you one more time to proceed and it will restart the device. This is normal. Another two minutes or so should pass by as you will see it installing correctly. And once you've done all that, you should be greeted with the OLED symbol now indicating that you have the SteamOS correctly installed. Give it another minute or so. The screen might go black for a minute. Don't worry. Don't feel obligated to try to turn it off and on again because I almost did that. Just let it do its thing and it eventually will boot into the SteamOS letting you log into your account again. And all right, we are now into the SteamOS as you can see here. I'm gonna go down to the settings and just to indicate the new SSD was correctly installed, we're just gonna verify that we do have two terabytes of free storage. And as you can see, we have 1.8 terabytes of free storage. It looks like it uses about 0.2 terabytes for the operating system, which is normal, but there we go. That was a successful SSD exchange for the Steam Deck OLED. And by far, this is the best thing that you can do for your Steam Deck is to upgrade its storage. I hope this video helped you in some way, shape, or form. I'll have all the links again in the description below. If you have any questions or if you got stuck in any part of this tutorial, let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like, share, support. As always, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. We'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.